and uh, for I 10 days as well uh, throughout the 10 days uh, and in every event every event will be will have a different theme and will have a different uh, decor and uh, like uh, a vibe to the event itself uh, and uh, of course uh, before the delegates arrive here we'll send them newsletters we'll release videos and posters and engage them on our social media tools uh, social media websites the Facebook page and Twitter account LinkedIn account um, to let them know more about Egypt and let them know more about uh, this country that it's not just pharaohs and, and the standing. diversity of the country yes so. we want to eliminate the stereotypes so this year we're going strong for uh, eliminating stereotypes about cultures in general and about Egypt in specific yes but do you face any security concerns coming here from the delegates from all over the world from Russia and from 112 other countries other than Egypt would it be hard for them to be thinking oh we're going to Egypt things are not really secure there or stable did you have this problem definitely definitely the security situation in Egypt was fluctuating a lot from moderately safe to really unsafe especially uh, to people in different countries it may be exaggerated a bit so there were a lot of concerns and there was a time in which we wanted to have the conference in Cairo but in the end we decided that it would be the most uh, stable to have it in Sharm el Sheikh instead and um, if we move back to the ultimate objective, definitely would be uh, supporting youth uh, to become um, the future leaders. Um, how is this going to be, uh, how, how is the uh, conference uh, or uh, the Congress actually is helping uh, the youth to, you know, to achieve such an objective? Uh, the conference actually acts as a platform between the corporate world, which uh, we as youth, we try to bring compassion and fresh ideas to and a platform between the corporate sector and the youth to uh, share ideas. It will act as a business ideas incubator uh, to make sure that the, any, the people who are leading the corporate world today sustain their ideas and their vision towards younger generations and the younger generations which are who are going to be the future leaders of these corporations um, infuse a sense of freshness and uh, youthfulness and have an edgy look towards the corporate uh, business and around the world in general. Yes, but did you as a, an organizing committee uh, choose or pick the timing of the conference or the congress or was it just uh, set as an annual date? The timing Horizon. during the year? Yes. No, usually it is set for some time in August. We only chose that it would be after the Eid. Uh, Oh, after Ramadan and yes. delayed, so it would be in maybe two months time, right? Three months. Three months time. 16th yeah, of August. Oh, but wouldn't that be hot for people coming here to Egypt? We, we, we understand that, but we decided to kind of have different resources available to make the weather better and to have indoor uh, uh, events, sessions yeah. and events, and then later in the day have out, uh, events that are outside. So, that would be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are going to be subjected to the sun for long hours, they won't be coming here again. <laughs> yeah. It won't be good for tourism. So, what, what is the portion of Egyptians joining uh, versus the 1,000 you mentioned from worldwide? What is the portion of Egyptians joining this Congress? Um, it's, it's, it's very, and yet compared to the 1,000 delegates, around 30 or 40 Egyptians. Yeah, as delegates, yeah, definitely as delegates, and then the people that are actually working on the conference would be another 30. Mm -hmm. so oh, perfect. So it's more or less an international, fully international. It's uh, the local is presenting the world as the normal pattern and nothing uh, further. So how, how would this be in a special way supporting Egypt uh, since it's held for the very first time here in Egypt? Uh, well, um the fact that uh, you need to start with the organizing team working on the conference, they're not just Egyptian. Uh, we have uh, more than 20 nationalities working on organizing this conference. We want to uh, position Egypt as a country that welcomes all nationalities and all cultures onto its lands. Uh, and as for the international delegates, uh, the, in the virtual experience before they arrive through the website and their social media websites, uh, and uh, the experience that will be given to them during the 10 days of the Congress and then the post-study uh, tours are all around Egypt uh, will uh, get, give them a better look on the country, the tourism, uh, of the st the st the tourism status of the country, places to go to, the attractions. And during the conference itself, uh, with our partners and uh, the sponsors, we're going to talk about the business scene here in Egypt. 
So it will give a very strong insight on the country, um, whether it has to do with uh, business and uh, business scene generally, and on how to rectify the current economic uh, status of Egypt or rectify the touristic uh, status of Egypt. Yes, but Sarah, you've been to the last edition or the last Congress of yes. Isaac in Russia. Yes. So what did you learn from it? I, I was part of the organizing committee, so I mm -hmm. was in Russia for about two months. Mm -hmm. um, I did not attend the agenda, but work-wise, I learned a lot from just how to manage work in a different culture, how to live extremely independently in a, in a new country. I was the only Egyptian working on it, mm -hmm. so I just literally packed my bags and headed to Russia into the unknown and that was one of the main learnings for me but it would be helping you in organizing this year's edition and this Definitely. year's Congress right it would be easier for you because uh, last year you were in Russia in a completely different country and a completely different culture now it's easier for you to be organizing this session or this edition of this uh, ISA Congress right yeah. the reality in Egypt is, is different than in Russia but knowing how things go generally and how big it is and the scale of it helps a lot in preparing things over here. So um, behind this work of bringing in uh, such an international congress in Egypt, given the political situation and the instability and security, is really a great work. So how was th this achieved to convince the Isaac to have, and who's really behind this you know, great effort? Isaac Egypt team of 2010-2011 uh, and 2011-2012 I believe they were the people behind bringing this conference to Egypt because uh, every year Isaac International opens a bid for uh, the comp for IC, you know, the IC in two years who will be holding IC, not the next IC, the one after uh, and Egypt apl uh, applied for this uh, bid uh, there were a lot of documents, a lot of endorsements we had to get and uh, the IC Egypt team of 2010-2011 worked really hard to ensure that IC 2013 comes to Egypt. So uh, how, how is this, uh, help me understand, so every year there is a group of, uh, uh, of youth running the IC. Is uh, that correct? Every year, but these, yes. They remain team. or... Every year just a, a different team is elected to okay. run the operations and the national direction for IC. And the, remain, and the rest are only members? Um, uh, I, I, I mean, I mean the rest of uh, like 20, uh, 2010 and 2011 are members, are existing members, or they are active. Uh, they have active roles within the Isaac. They're alumni, so they kind okay. of finished their Isaac experience, and now they're called Isaac alumni. Yeah, this is why I was asking because they, they still care, yes. and they are trying to support to have. Uh, have Isaac to be. But they brought IC and they brought International Congress to Egypt during their term during okay. the active uh, term. Uh -huh. well, but I understand that uh, Egypt, uh, Isaac Egypt is ranked yes. number 10 yes. of the 113 countries uh, in Isaac. How did you get that? How did you achieve that? <laughs> well, <laughs> it was it's not easy, right? Because yeah, you have uh, about 110 or 112 other countries mm -hmm. and you're competing with them on a daily basis or yearly basis at least. How did you achieve the number 10? For Egypt, yes. the kind of the status of Egypt and, and the way that countries looked up to Egypt within the ISAC network is something that is actually pretty recent. It's it happened within the past uh, five years, and uh, honestly, like if you if you look at like different factors, whether the market or the youth or anything, in the end, like I believe it comes down to the individuals that are actually responsible for doing this. And, and it's the individuals that are in the organization that really pushed for this to happen and it's people that had a vision and for Egypt and for Isaac in Egypt. And I, I also believe in when I first joined Isaac, I joined Isaac four years ago and the, the number of uh, live uh, changing ex, uh, exchange experiences they wanted to deliver in 2010 was uh, 300 exchanges and now we're striving for 2,000 exchange experience just throughout the month, in the summer time. So I believe that um, this drive and this uh, belief of what we can actually achieve has, is what you know, is the co common... Uh, uh, so there's a change for the better even after the revolution. Yes. Things got worse usually uh, after the revolution, except for Isaac, as you can say now. <laughs> so yes. How did uh, you maintain that? Uh, we, uh, in fact, regarding that point, we, would, we used to say that, that 
Isaac is the best thing about Egypt yes. after the revolution. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the only positive uh, yes. uh, rank uh, so, uh, organization in Egypt after the revolution. Uh, we achieved that through belief. We yeah, believe that our vision has to be um, sustained, our vision has to be uh, uh, carried forward from one generation to the other, that peace and fulfillment of humankind's potential, which is the Isaac vision, should be um, implemented. And it, it's pure passion and belief. Yeah. It's what led us to this day. So, um, relating to the topic of the revolution and after the Egyptian uh, uprising, um, how was this having an effect in terms of your image as youth um, Arabs and after the, uh, the, the youth of Arabs has changed the world really with the, the, the Arab Spring and the revolution that happened in different countries. So how did this affect, the question goes to you Sarah, so how did this affect your image uh, internally with Isaac and your other uh, peers outside? One of the goals of Isaac is to be a global youth voice, to be able to represent the youth and Isaac in Egypt to be able to represent the voice of the youth in Egypt and for us in front of the Isaac network it was our success that as Egyptians uh, and, and the youth in Egypt we were able to actually create change and it's not just something that you talk about or just a vision, it's something that is actually practical and it happens and we're able to do things through youth. But I understand that Isaac is the world's largest student-run international organization, right? So yeah. what is so special about Isaac Egypt? How did you make it to be so special? Uh, dedication, hard work, again, belief in, in what we're actually doing. Uh, it's giving every individual and every single member in Isaac in Egypt uh, the, the right tools uh, and enough confidence, infusing confidence within our members that they, c they can sustain impact on other people's lives. Does it have to do with something about the mindset of the members, of the delegates of, of Egypt yes, here in course. Isaac? Yes, it, um, as I was saying, uh, providing the member generally in any organization with enough confidence that he can create and sustain enough impact or, or big enough impact to um, change someone else's life. This is what we do in Isaac, we change agents. This can lead an organization uh, from, you know, from bottle, from you know, bottom, uh, bottom lines to you know, the biggest of success. Because it's, it's very important for a member to be aware of and you know, to know what he's actually capable of to strive for better results. But you did mention something about a change agent. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, in Isaac, uh, as I said earlier, our vision is peace and fulfillment of humankind's yes. potential. And our mission is to engage every young person in the world. Mm -hmm. So we believe that if we combine the vision and the mission, uh, we create change agents. People working on this should be you know, are called change agents. Mm -hmm. We sustain change throughout the world. So, so how do you address uh, people, young people, as a change agent? Yes. How would you engage them in such an idea, starting from the very start? How did you engaging, them, engaging them with what exactly? Yes, uh, to be maybe just participating in the Congress or the ISAAC conference this year. Mm -hmm. How would you change them? How would you talk to them in the first place if they're not interested really? Uh, we would uh, start by introducing what ISAAC is, the history, how ISAAC started, the fact that ISAAC started after World War II uh, by uh, nine European uh, uh, citizens from seven different, co seven different countries in hopes of uh, changing and empowering their countries. Um, we would uh, relate that to Egypt, we would relate that the, the current status and the current scene now in Egypt is in dire need of rectification and um, uh, getting better. Uh, we, would, uh, and we would enable them with the, uh, with the correct idea that um, if by joining ISIS, they yes. would actually be sustaining positive impact on the society they live in and they would be living a life-changing experience themselves. Right, finally, Nisman Efe and Sara Shahat, I would like to thank you very much for joining thank us. You. It has been a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very much. Now let's move on for a short break and return for more.
organization that aims to